I'll tell you something. Extreme chunking for stripers is really a lost art. Like these kids these days, they ain't got the patience to sit on a chunk for 15, 18, 20 hours in a soak. And it's sad, it's sad, you know, because these kids are never gonna know what it's like to catch a truly big striper. Turn that freaking light off right and now. <laughs> You gotta look at this garbage all the time here. It's unbelievable. Can I smoke while we're doing this or what? Yeah, you can. Oh, okay, good. I was gonna anyway, so. Yeah. In my entire life, I've only had two true friends who could chunk with me, and that was Marty and Artie. Of course, Marty, we lost him during the 9th Street Weakfish Blitz at 86. This is where it happened right here. Salute, Marty, God bless. He tried to swim out to the pylon out on the bridge to get his 50 cent bucktail back. And I'm like, Marty, the current's too strong. You know you only got one good leg, you can't do it. And he got swept away, never to be seen again. I mean, it is what it is, but. All that for what? Allure, allure, not even a chunk, allure. And then there was Artie. And you know, to tell you the truth, I ain't actually certain he's really dead, but you know, one day he just didn't show up to chunk. Yeah, I, I think that was uh, November 89. And to, the only thing that would have kept Artie away from the Margate Pump House Blitz at 89 was being dead, so. That one's for you, Artie. How about that? How about you put, oh my back. How about you put down your cameras? Jesus Christ. I'm like a bunch of flies around here on shit. I went up to Staten Island to get in on the Highland Boulevard Blitz of 71. The Blitz was so good, I ended up getting a job at the dump up there and stayed for a while. That's how I got my name Bob the Garbage Man. That's where I learned to chunk with the best of them, like Rufa Dave, uh, Flea Market Lou. I'm talking about guys like Massage Parlor Marky and Mitch the Mouth Breather. Then you had Onion Breath Andy and Paulie Pringles. I remember, right, there was this one gal, she used to come out and chunk with us. She was really good, too. Come out here, chunk 20 hour shifts with us. Real sweetheart, too. She'd give you the shirt right off her back. We used to call it Debbie the Dirt Bag. I mean, this is when I was running with Radislav the Puerto Rican and Sugar Bush Sam. Jeff the Janitor. Jeff the Janitor was out there. I feel like I got a mother bunch of mooks stalking me while I'm out here trying to fish. <coughs> Smooth. After the Tottenville Billets of 75, whole scene changed. I had all these mooks showing up out of the burrows, throwing pencil divers, needle poppers, jiggy doos, jiggy don't. It, it, it didn't make no difference. The whole scene changed. It was time for a change. Any luck, boys? Yeah, no, nobody. No. You guys throw any chunks? Yeah. No? Ah, uh, that's why. And let me tell you something else. I ain't never thrown no lure for no striped bass in my life. Yeah, I don't know. I've, you see what I'm saying? Like, you ain't gonna catch fish like that out here. My, my dad didn't fight in World War II, so he could stand out on the rocks and throw a Yozuri and not catch anything, you know? I ended up here in Atlantic City just before the Christmas Eve Blitz of 76. There were stripers eating our chunks in midair, three feet out of the friggin' water before they even hit. We had bets on who could even get their chunk in the water before it got ate. It's my boy Chris, he, he sells the best shit in town here. And I, I mean, how many 704Zs you sell this week? None. You know, I loved it, Blitz was awesome. Ended up staying here, putting up camp. See what they got in stock. See that slime on there? Good smell, good texture. It's good bunker. It's good bunker. Surface blast, like, what do you need any of this shit for? You got bunker. And I see these kids running around town these days, reels that cost more than a suit from Tony Suit World. They got custom rods built by a guy who don't even know the difference between a big striper and a nice pair of slacks. 
I, this is my backup reel here. I bought this in uh, around 78 of a Polish kid named Irish Greg. And let me tell you something. Everybody going around talking about drag pressure. You know what you do? You get a pair of freaking vice grips. You turn the knob on your reel till it doesn't turn anymore. And then boom, done. You're stripe efficient. I dare you to try to pull that. You know, honestly, come to think about it, like I don't think I've ever fought a 50 pound plus bass for more than 45 seconds. Ugh. Oh my God. You see this, the hooks I use here? Big ADOT steel mustad right here. Ain't nothing coming unglued from this thing once you stick them in the face. But you ain't gonna see the garbage man out here messing with Jimmy Gatsu or Gary Yokohama hooks, you know what I'm saying? I like to hook my chunks in the center like that. A lot of people start saying shit about aerospace, aerodynamics, and casting. Oh, I'm out of big bass right at your feet. Working on the night moves. Du, du. We got a thing that's called the radar love. They don't bark and they don't bite. Apparently they don't bite today. <laughs> this is our old place here. This is where me and Marty used to cut it up back in the day, you know, before the accident. This is where we cut our teeth. I can't even tell you how many world record fish were caught while we was living here. World record, whatever. One night in 84, me, Marty, and Artie caught a fish so big that we went through an entire friggin' case of Rheingolds before we got the meat off one side of that fish. We weren't even that excited about it. It was more of a pain in the ass. Artie took his half home and gave it to his cats. You know, come to think of it, this is the first place that Dirty Socks Dave built me my first custom chunking stick. Right here too, right here, right there. And I think it only had two guides on it. That's all you need. <laughs> here we go. Wissahickon. Oh man, this brings me back. Wissahickon Ad Blitz, 88. Those fish that day, they were literally on dry sand and me and Marty was walking up and putting the chunks in his mouth. I learned from Javier the Russian that you never, never sit down while fishing a chunk. You gotta respect the fish, you gotta respect the bite. That's like sitting down when they're singing the national anthem. Many years ago I was fishing with Trick Shot Bird and I put my rod in the sand sponge in front of him. That hit me so hard I still ain't got the right vision in this eye. And as I'm coming to, there's Kenny the Benny holding Bert back, and Bert's screaming at me while I'm still on the ground. Hey, do you ever think I put my rifle down while I was storming Hamburger Hill? You know who that is over there? That's old Keith the Cop and Tall Mike. Mike had to cut the lower halves of his legs off after he fell off horse and Dinlet one time. That's why he's so short now, but he's still Tall Mike, you know? I mean, what, what do you go, like 150, 160? <laughs> go around, I look at these experts these days talking about moon and tide. Let me tell you. Tide doesn't matter. When you're sitting on a chunk for 20 hours, you're gonna fish every tide cycle twice. And if you're going out and you're fishing every night like you should be, you're gonna be fishing every moon phase anyway. Don't give me any of this Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin shit, Mars lunar landing, nobody cares. Go out there and throw your chunk. I just, I don't, I don't fresh bait, don't, it don't matter. These bass don't know. I don't know, man, I think those perch are still good. Bunk ain't dead in the wild. It's not like they're out there hunting for dead bunker. And it's extract. This right here drives them crazy. You know, if you ask me, I don't even think you need to bunker the chunk. But it just, it's, it's a vessel for the anise. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we'll give it a shot at you boys once, but I mean, we ain't caught nothing here since 95 at least. It's like going to work. Get your lunch pail, head down to the shop, punch the clock, punch the bass. And people come up to me all the time, you know, asking me, hey, Bob, will you come over and do a, a seminar at our fishing club? And like, why would a guy like me want to go talk to a bunch of momos that are happy catching fish the size of the ones I cut up to use for chunks? Or what exactly am I supposed to say to them? I'm all fouled up here. Good morning, how are you guys doing? Beautiful day. It's a fix up, uh, but doesn't mean you have to fix it, you know? <laughs> and then you got these assholes that are like, hey Bob, I ain't seen you catch a big striper since the Yom Kippur Blitz in 93. And I look at him and say, no, that's just the last time your sorry ass seen me walk into the bait shop with a giant striper. 
In 93, Stinky Rubenstein's nephew was walking around talking about something called the internet, saying how you're gonna start being able to see everybody's fish pictures on there soon. Why do you just keep staring at your phone? What are they doing? Are they blitzing on InstaFace? What, InstaFace is the blitz going on in the canal right now? You know, I can't have that. I, I, I live through the Cold War. Get off your phone, unless you're gonna get in your car and go to the canal right now with your daughters. Come on, Ricky, get the daughters. What, you wanna go nine hours to do so? Go then. I don't care. I mean, you know all those guys out in Montauk, Gay Head, Block Island. They all don't like me because I fish South Jersey. They don't like the garbage man. But the truth is, I've outfished every single one of them on chunks. You, you know, if you come up next to me when I'm on a soak and I'm in the zone, and you throw a clam belly out, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to cut you line. I'm talking about guys like Jimmy Fema, Cheech to Cheechy, Insane and the Elbow. You come up next to me with a blood worm in the middle of a soak, you throw it out there, what's going to happen? I'm going to cut you line. I was catching bigger fish on chunks behind them in the wash on the rocks they was friggin' standing on. A lot of giant horny cows were caught while we was living here, you know? And you know these guys, they don't even know nothing about the National Teacher Appreciation Day bullets in 97. Do you know why? Because I was the only goddamn guy there. I, I don't like you. Not nah, you're okay. I don't like you. These guys can go talk all the trash they want because they go home, they post the little 10 pound schoolies on America's Onlines, but I'm still gonna be out here. I'm still gonna be out here in AC, in the soak. Exactly, I, I mean, how long you, you wanna film me just standing outside my tackle shop here? This is it, you done? All right, you guys said there was $100 in this for me, right? Correct. 